Let's solve leak code 53 maximum subarray. So we're given an integer array of nums and we want to find the contiguous subarray containing at least one number which has the largest sum and then we want to return only the sum. So this array has positive numbers and it has negative numbers. So that's what we have to keep in mind. In this case, the largest sum is six and it's just this middle portion of the array. So the first thing you might try is just compute every single subarray, right? So let's first compute every single subarray starting at negative two. There's one subarray, there's two subarrays, there's three subarrays, and then we keep doing that until we got to the end, right? And then we could repeat the process for the second number. So the subarray starting at one here, another subarray starting at one here, another subarray starting at one here, all the way until the end. Now we could repeat that same process for every number in the array. So let's just write the pseudocode to see what that, what kind of complexity this would yield. So let's say we're starting, the i is gonna represent the starting value. It's gonna be, it's gonna range from zero all the way to the last number, n minus one, or the last index, n minus one. And then we wanna get the ending index. So I'm gonna use j for the end of this subarray. So we're gonna start at i, and we're gonna keep going until the end of the subarray or until the end of the entire array, n minus one. So this represents the start, i represents the start, j represents the end. Now we actually wanna compute uh, the sum of this subarray, so we're gonna have a third loop for that, right? Let's use k, k is gonna range all the way from i to j, right? Because that's what represents the subarray. And then in here we'd compute the sum, right? Now, obviously this is really inefficient, right? The time complexity is n cubed. It's obvious because we have three uh, for loops. So let's try to expand upon this. Let's see if we can make any shortcuts to improve it. So the most obvious thing you'll probably notice is that we can save time when we're computing a subarray. So if let's say we computed this subarray, right? And then we wanna compute the next subarray with just one added element. Well, we can save the result of this, right? And say it's our current sum or whatever. And then to compute this subarray, we just have to add this number over here, right? So we can just say current sum plus negative one. And so this can save us time. Let's take a look at the time complexity of this solution. So we're gonna have another for loop, which is gonna represent the start. So start is gonna range from zero all the way to n minus one. And we're gonna have another loop for the end of the subarray. J is gonna range from i to the last index, n minus one. And then inside of the loop, we're gonna maintain our current sum and simply just add the number j each iteration of the loop, right? So this is a little more efficient, O of n squared. It's a pretty easy optimization to make and it improves your solution a lot, but can we do even better than this? So now the question you should ask yourself is, do we have to compute every subarray starting at every single value in the array, right? Do we have to start at every single value and compute every subarray that comes after it. I don't think we do. Remember, we're trying to find the maximum subarray. We can use that knowledge to help us make a shortcut. So let's take a look at this. We have a negative two, right? So when we're starting here, that's gonna be our max sum so far. Then we get to negative two plus one. So this is negative one so far, right? Do we actually need this negative number? The negative numbers don't contribute anything in this case, right? So we can disc we can basically ignore that value, right? Once we get here, we can basically say this negative value, this negative prefix that came before positive one isn't gonna help us at all. So let's not even consider it. So next we get to this negative three. Now up until here, our total sum is negative two, right? So then we get to this four. This is a negative prefix that came before it, negative two, right? So we can say up until this point, we're not even gonna consider what came before. So this one and negative three aren't gonna help us at all, just ignore them. Now we get to a negative one. So the prefix that came before this was a positive four, so we're gonna not delete it from our list. We're gonna keep that positive four and add it to this negative one. So now we're gonna be at three so far. 
Now we get to a positive two, right? Even though there's a negative one that came before it, well, there was a positive four that came before that. So if we get rid of this negative one, we also have to get rid of the positive four, which we don't wanna do. Remember, we have to keep the subarray contiguous. So I'm not gonna chop this portion off. I'm gonna keep it. Now, now we're gonna add two to it. So now we're gonna be at five. Then we're gonna get this one. We're gonna add it and get our subarray of six. And this is the result so far, but let's keep going and see what happens. Next, we'll have a negative five, right? So minus five, now we're at one. So obviously we decreased our subarray, but we know this negative five is not gonna be deleted because we had a positive six portion comprised of these four elements that, were, that came before that. Lastly, we get a positive four again, add that, our sum is still five, so we, we see that the max subarray was this portion of these four elements, which totaled to six. Now this was a linear time algorithm. It's kind of like a sliding window, right? We keep uh, incrementing our right pointer as we, go, as we go through the array, right? But our left pointer keeps getting shifted if we ever have a negative prefix like this negative two or this negative two portion comprised of these two elements. So anytime we get a negative prefix, we remove it. And for me, it kind of helps, it kind of helps me to think about this as like a sliding window. And since it's a linear time algorithm, the overall time complexity is big O of N. We didn't need any extra memory. We just had to go through the array, removing any negative prefix as we computed the total sum. Okay, so now let's code it up. So we can initialize our max subarray to the first value in the array. That's like the default value that we're gonna give it because we have to give it something and it can't be zero because we know we have negative values in this array. And we know the array is non-empty so the zero value of the array is always gonna exist. And we're gonna be constantly computing our current sum so I'm gonna initialize that to zero. So let's go through each number in nums. Now remember, if we had a negative prefix, we're gonna remove that portion from our current sum. So the way that we can check this is just check if current sum is at any point negative, if it's less than zero, we're just gonna reset it back to zero. And then after that, we can add our current number to this. This will make sure that we're always computing the maximum that we can. Now this current sum could be the possible maximum, so we're just gonna update our max subarray to the maximum of itself as well as the max that we just computed. After we're done with that, we'll return whatever we computed as the max subarray. I hope this helped show you kind of the intuition behind the solution of this problem. If it was helpful, leave a like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.